All right, everybody, I wanted to show you a walkthrough of my first TriHackMe room. This is the Wireshark Filters room available on TriHackMe. So if you go out to TriHackMe and you just register for a free account, this is going to be one of the rooms that you can do a walkthrough of. Now, why did I choose this platform to do this kind of content with? Well, what I like about TriHackMe is that you can go on there, you can download the PCAP, and then you can start to answer questions about that PCAP, and it gives you a real nice way of seeing, did I put the right thing in? Did I achieve that goal? So it's real interactive. I like the hands-on approach to this platform. So go ahead and click the link down below. Now, at the time of this recording, this room was not yet available on the search features of TriHackMe. There's still waiting to release it to the general public, but you are able to access it directly. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do for this video. All right, so here we are on the Wireshark Filters room. So in this room, like it mentions, we're gonna be learning about how to filter traffic. Now, I wanted to start here just because filtering is such a big part of what we do with Wireshark. It's important that we have some hands-on practice of different common filters that you will absolutely be using as you learn to use this analyzer. Okay, so I'm just, uh, Okay, so there's two ways that you can get to the lab trace files. Either you can start the virtual machine and you can access it remotely, either through your VPN or through the jump box on TriHackMe. Or if you don't want to do it that way, what you can do is through each of these tasks, you have a PCAP that you can download and then you can answer those questions for that task. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one. I'm going to download each PCAP and then show you the answers. All right, so I'm just going to go to the introduction. Feel free to read through this if you'd like to. I'm just going to say completed just to keep this video as short as I can. I'm going to collapse that task. Let's go ahead and come to protocol filters. Now, these are the most simple filters for us to remember. So I'm just going to come to download task files. I'm going to let that download. Then I'm going to pop that open in Wireshark. Okay, so here I've got Wireshark open with that TriHackMe protocols PCAP. Uh, this is the second copy because there was two that were in my downloads folder. But if I come here, if you look down to the lower right, you're going to see 73, 74 packets. If you have the same, that means that we're on the same PCAP. It's very unlikely that that number could be the same on two different ones. But let's go ahead and start working through these questions. So the first one is how many ARP packets are in this PCAP and then how many IP packets? So here's a simple filter. I'm just going to go up to the top right, just type in ARP, enter, or the top left to put in the ARP protocol filter. Then if I come down here to the bottom right, I can see the number that meet that filter is 1032. So I'm going to come back over here. Let's go ahead and enter 1032. All right, that'll answer that one. Next was IP. So how many packets are IP? Simply put in IP, enter 6342. All right, 6342. Good deal. Okay, so what's the MAC address for that this station? 192.168.56.1, just going to copy that. Going to come back over here. I'm just going to do an IP.adder equals equals. And then I'm just looking for packets that have that station in it. So if I come down here, I'm just going to take a look at this packet. And this happens to be packet 1043. So this is a reset, and it's originating from this IP address, 56.1. Uh, and if I take another peek at the IP header, I can see that this is an unrouted packet. So the TTL is 64. Now when a TTL starts with common bit boundary numbers, so 64, 128, 255, that means that that packet has not yet passed through a router in most cases. So that means that I'm on the same network. The source MAC and the source IP are coming from the same station. All right, so if I take source, now it's kind of a cool feature of Wireshark here. What I can do is I can just take address, right click, copy value. All right, I'm going to bring that back over to try hack me, right click paste. And now I can just paste in that MAC address, hit submit. And that's the MAC address for that station. How many ICMP packets? All right, coming up to ICMP. And I can see I've got 1064 there. So I'm going to type in 1064. All right, next remove all ICMP packets. How many are left over? Okay, so I'm going to come over here. So to remove ICMP, the way that I do this is two ways. I can say exclamation point ICMP to use that symbol, or I can come over here and just say not space ICMP. Same thing. If I look at the bottom right down here, 6310 is the number of leftover packets. So let's go ahead and put that in, 6310, and we got the correct answer. Filter for TCP, how many packets? All right, TCP. And if I come down there, 6293. 
All right, six, two, nine, three. Okay, gonna say submit. Now keep the filter applied for TCP. Notice that there's some ICMP packets. That's TCP encapsulated within the ICMP header, and that's why it matched our TCP filter. But can you add a filter to this statement that will remove all the ICMP? So can you add a filter that will remove all of this extra ICMP stuff? Well, if I say TCP and not ICMP, all right, so that's a filter that I use quite a bit, or that type of filter, the construct of that filter. I want to show all of this, but not this. Okay, so here I go. If I take a look at that lower right, 5269. So let's come back over here, 5269. All right, let's say submit. All right, that looks good. Now filter for UDP and remove any ICMP as well. How many meet that filter? So I'm gonna do the same thing, just pull off TCP, just go UDP. Come down here to the lower right, I got nine packets, okay, so nine. And I saw that, just so you know, I, I moved off this quickly, but that's down there in the lower right is where I'm always looking for those packet numbers. Now filter for only ICMP echo reply packets. How many do you find? Well, if we're not sure how to set that, first I'm gonna just filter on ICMP. Well, if I'm not sure how to do that, I can come over here and just put a filter in for ICMP. Down here I can see in my packet list, I've got a ping reply. So if I come down, let's go ahead and take a look at what is it that makes an ICMP reply a reply. What field should I filter for? Well, here I can see type zero. That's what's gonna make this ping a reply. So let's just go ahead and take that. I'm gonna right click, prepare as filter, selected, ICMP type zero. And if I take a look here, I can see all my replies here. All right, those are all replies. And there are 16 packets that meet that filter. So let's go ahead and do 16 and let's say submit. All right, so that was the end of task number two. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop open task three now. Let's go ahead and execute this. So I'm going to come down here to the questions and well, first I'm gonna download that PCAP and I'm gonna pop it open in Wireshark and we'll answer the questions. So in this P PCAP, the name of the PCAP is Try Hack Me Web, PCAP NG. Okay, I've got 1078 packets. Gonna come over here, look at that first question. Filter for all packets to and from the host 172.67.27. So I'm gonna take this IP, right click it, and I'm gonna come up here to display filter. Let's just do our IP adder. So this means either the source or the destination. All right, so here I can see I've got 320 packets to and from that device. Okay, so 320. All right, next, how many packets are from the DNS server? All right, so first I gotta figure out what the DNS server is. So first I'm just gonna filter DNS. And here I can see some queries going and some responses. Okay, so now I have a filter for DNS. So all I gotta do is just take a look at the ones that are replies coming back from that server. Here I can see 4.1, so I'm just gonna take that IP and that location. I'm going to drag and drop it upstairs and then I'm just going to apply it as a selected value. So here I can see ip.source equals equals and then that IP, those are from the DNS server. All right, so I can see that I've got six packets and all of those are responses. Okay, so let's go ahead and say six, all right. Now filter for the busiest IP conversation in the PCAP, how many packets meet this filter? So to do that, when anytime I'm looking at busy or looking for top talkers, for me that always makes me come up to statistics and look at conversations. All right, this is gonna bring up a, another screen here. Let me bring that over. And right here it's asking for, let me come back over here, the busiest IP conversation, not TCP conversation. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here to IPv4. There's four different conversations. I'm going to sort on packets or bytes. Now it's asking for the number of packets. Okay, so I could just say 714 and be at it, but uh, I also could filter for this by going apply as filter, selected A to B, B to A. If you notice the background now updated, I can close this. See those two IP addresses are now populated in my display filter bar and I've got my 714 packets. All right, so let's go ahead and put that in. All right, and that was our right answer. So these are both HTTP and HTTPS conversations. So let's filter for all traffic to and from the first two web servers and this station IP. So how many packets meet that filter? Okay, so we want all traffic to and from the first two web servers. All right, so I'm just gonna come back. I'm just gonna clear out that display filter and let me go over here. So there's both 
HTTP and HTTPS conversations. So let's filter for all traffic to and from those first two web servers. I'm just gonna take these two IPs and just copy. And what I wanna do is come back over here and I'm going to just populate them in the display filter. So that I want to and from both of these IPs. Okay, so when I come over here and I copy this, there's a couple of different ways that I can set this filter. All right, I can do this. I can do ip.adder equals equals that first value. And then I can say, or ip.adder equals equals the other value, all right? And that'll work. That'll give me my 352 packets on the bottom right. Now there's another way that I can do this. Now this is a trick for you. Uh, anytime that you start to see that you're filtering for the same location or the same field, but the values are different, what you can do is you can start to use something called, instead of equals equals, you can do a membership operator, which is in then curly brace. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to remove this extra stuff here. I'm just gonna put a comma between those two IP addresses and then an end on the curly brace. So either one of those filters would work. What I'm saying is I wanna see those addresses, one of those addresses always in the IP address field. So show any conversation that includes one of those two addresses. Okay, so this is great when you're not sure if you're exactly filtering on a certain conversation with an IP or if it's a few different end users that you'd like to monitor coming into a server or if that end user is talking to several different servers. So that's a good one to keep on hand. 352 is the answer. Let's come over here, 352, and we will hit submit. Okay, so now it's asking what symbols can be used in place of the word and. So the word is and, but if we look at our C-like symbol, this is where we can go and, and, and we can say submit. Okay, so it's ampersand, ampersand instead of the word and. What symbol can be used in the place of the word not? That's gonna be exclamation point. Let's hit submit. What's the syntax to remove all ARP traffic from a PCAP? It's gonna be no ARP. All right, very good. All right, so this was the third task. So now we're wrapped up with that one. Let's go ahead and pop open now to TCP filters. These are ones you're gonna use quite a bit. Now it's saying use the same PCAP for task three for this one. So I'm just going to leave this uh, Try Hack Me web uh, PCAP up and I'm going to start to apply these other filters to it. So let's, let's dig in. So how many packets in this PCAP have the TCP SYN flag set? come back over here and let's do tcp.flags.sin equals equals one so this is activating that flag all right so this is going to be both the sin and the synac come down here to tcp down into the flags field i just want any packet at all that has that sin bit set now the way that i got to this uh, field name how did i find that field name well if you come down here to the sin bit on any tcp packet you can notice here on the lower left that you have tcp.flags.sin so Wireshark's giving you a little cheat sheet. So if you want to filter on this field, this would be the field name that you use in a display filter. Okay, so I could type it out, or I could just find a sin, grab this, drag it upstairs, and just say selected, and that's gonna give me the, exactly the same thing. All right, so I can see I got 22 packets, okay? And now, how many have the thin flag set? So if I come down here to the flags area of the TCP header, this is where I can click on thin, tcp.flags.thin, that would be the syntax. So I'm just going to flip sin to fin. All right, and I can see I got 11 packets. So let's go ahead and fill this in. Now, how many TCP resets? Okay, so this is where instead of uh, sin or fin, we're actually gonna type in reset. And we've got four in this PCAP. Come over here to my answers. Type that in, whoop, whoop, answer correct. So now how many SINs were sent on TCP port 80, not including TCP SYNAX? So I just want the SINs. All right, so let's build out this filter. First, I'm gonna do tcp.port equals equals 80. Okay, so I'm just going to apply that. See, I've got 60 packets, and I want tcp.flags.sin equals equals one, and tcp.flags.ac equals equals one, equals equals zero, sorry. I've got four of them. Now we also could have in this instance, just because we don't have a whole lot of them and all of these sins don't have any other flags in them. This is important. I could come down here and I could just say flags is two. So literally tcp.flags equals equals two a decimal two, and it would give me exactly the same thing. 
Let me come back over here. E equals equals two. The reason for the two is that because in all these packets, it just happens to be that the only flag that is set is the send bit. However, I don't want you all to get into the habit of filtering on just that bit, right? And the reason is because sometimes you have the CWR bit set, the ECN echo, and then you also have a send bit set. And if you filter on this flags field, uh, tcp.flags equals two, you'll miss those other ones. So for now, I mean, we also could use an ampersand here, but that's getting a little too, but that's getting into a bit more of advanced filtering. For now, just get used to filtering on just the bit. TCP flags dot sin equals equals one and TCP dot flags dot ack equals equals zero. Just do that for now, and we'll continue to build on our knowledge here. All right, so that's four packets. Gonna come in here, answer format four. All right, next, find the busiest TCP connection in this PCAP, what's the client port number? Okay, so I'm going to remove my filter, gonna go statistics, conversations, and if I come over here to TCP, and I'm going to sort on packets, and the client side ephemeral port number is 47650. Okay, so I'll come down here, 47650, submit. Very good. How many unique TCP connections are in this PCAP? We saw that over here. There's 11. Okay, so let's go to 11, or TCP connections or conversations. What filter can we use to find TCP errors? Hopefully this is one that you've used before with Wireshark. It's an important one to know about. And that's every time that my analysis flags get triggered. So Wireshark does a bit of analysis for us using TCP analysis flags. It's saying, hey, this packet has a flag on it. You might want to check it out. So things like keep alives, previous packet not captured, retransmissions, out of orders, duplicate acknowledgments, zero windows, uh, full windows, uh, window updates. So there's a lot of different types of things that will trigger that analysis flags. So that's an important one to know about. If I come down here, tcp.analysis.flags hit submit very good okay so now what operator allows us to quickly filter for several different ports Ooh. okay so if i wanted to filter on more than one port so tcp port instead of doing equals equals what i would do is i would use that membership operator again so that's where i would say in curly brace this is where i can say in 21 23 25 close curly brace and then I will see all the packets in my PCAP that met that filter. At the same time, I can also come over here. I can just put a print around this just to make sure that it's nice and contained. Put a parenthesis and I can also say not. So now show me all the packets that are not TCP port 21, 23, 25. Okay, so that's the operator. So let's come over here and just say in. Now filter on all traffic on TCP ports, these these ports, these 10 different ports. Okay, I'm just gonna copy that. Gonna come back over here, so TCP port, back this out. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that range and paste it in. And instead of a dash, what I wanna do is two dots. And what this does is it allows Wireshark to say, okay, anything on any port within this range. So as long as it matches, go ahead and display it. If I come down there, I've got 714 packets. I'm gonna come over here, 714. All right, and hit submit, and we're good to go. So those are some common TCP filters that for sure you're gonna use in Wireshark. Next, let's go to DNS. Okay, so I'm going to extract this out. Let's download this task file. Okay, so I popped it open in Wireshark, try hack me DNS, and I can see that I've got 440 packets that are displayed. Okay, so you're gonna learn about some of these filters and also the record types and so on. Uh, let's come down to these questions. So what's the address of our server here? So we've got queries going to 4.1. So I'm gonna come down here to our destination address, right click, copy, value. Come back over here, going to just paste that value in and there is our IP. Now set a filter for queries or requests. How many packets match that filter? So here I've got some queries, I've got some responses. So let's grab a query. Going to uh, collapse that IP area. I'm gonna come down to DNS, open that up. And I wanna come down here to DNS flags. Now what is it that makes a DNS query a query? Well, if you come down here to our flags response, this is a zero. That makes this a DNS query. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna take, drag this upstairs, drop it in. And here I can see I've got 44 queries. Now just to make sure that this is correct, I'm just gonna eyeball through and sure enough, yep, all looks good. I got 44 of them. So I'm gonna come in here, 44. Next, set a filter for responses. How many packets match that filter? Well, if a zero is a query, then a response must be a one. It's binary. So query zero, response one, and again, that's dns.flags.response equals equals one, and I got 44 of them. So right away, something I learned is that every query that was sent out has an associated response. It's unlikely that I have a query and two responses. It's most likely, okay, I've got a, a request, a response, a request, a response. How many packets contain the word hack in the DNS query name? Ooh, okay. So what I can do is I can come down to, let's go ahead and do queries. And what I can do is I can say name. And what I'm interested in here is this field, dns.query.name. Okay, so I'm actually going to right click this and I'm just gonna say prepare as filter selected. Now the question was how many packets contain the word hack in that field? So the best way to do that is not equals equals hack, but doing contains hack. Okay, so anywhere, whenever that field shows up, dns.query.name, if it contains the word hack. So if that word hack appears as either a request or response in that name, then go ahead and display the packet. I've got 12 packets that match that filter. I'm gonna say 12, and we're good to go. All right, now packet one is a request for tryhackme.com. In the response, there are three addresses resolved to this name. What's the third address in the response? Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the request. So it's in packet one. And part of the point of this exercise is to show you how a request and response are indicated in Wireshark. Here's the query and here's the response. And what Wireshark does is you see that we have these two transaction IDs. So it's 592B and 592B. It just matches those together. Okay, so in that, in a DNS response, we can have one query, two queries, whatever, and we can have more than one answer resource records. It's not just one. So let's actually take a look. Go to answers. Here I can see I got three different addresses come back for tryhackme.com. Going to expand this out. Here I can see that the third one is this address. Right click. Going to copy that value. Come back to tryhackme. Going to paste that in. And let's submit it. Now, how long will this record be stored in the client cache in seconds? Well, in the answer record, it tells us the time to live, the DNS response TTL. So here I can see it's 300 seconds, or in other words, five minutes. So I'm going to come back here and just say 300. All right. And then a response can carry multiple records. Which packet has the most answer RRs? And give the frame number. All right, so here we can see that we have three answer research records. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to right click and I'm just going to apply the answer RRs temporarily as a column. And the other thing that I wanna do is just, I could just sort this right now if I want. But just to be sure, just going to remove that filter and just type in DNS, just to be sure I got all my DNS packets. And one really stands out with the most answer resource records. It's got nine. And here I can see a lot of different responses, some C names, some IPv6 addresses, uh, a few different IPv6 addresses, in fact, some additional records. So, okay, great. So uh, this is uh, nine resource records. So the actual packet number is 62. So I'm gonna come over here and just pop in 62 is the answer. And last, what filter would display all DNS queries and responses for IPv6 addresses? Well, we already saw, uh, here we have some responses for v6. Okay, so the thing that makes a v6 request or response, we're looking for this 28 response type. Okay, so it's type quad A. Right, so that's the type of record we're looking for. If I come up to the request, I can also go to the query, and here we're asking for type, so DNS query type is 28. And then I can see that the response type is 28 as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that type, I'm gonna take and drag it upstairs. Since that type appears in both the request and the response, I'll get both of them. So I'm gonna type that in, type 28. I'm gonna sort this. So here I can see I got query and response. 
dns.query.type equals 28. I got 44 packets that show up. Uh, and let's come over here. So what filter would do this? All right, so let's go ahead and copy this. Let's see if this uh, met what TryHackMe is asking for. dns.query.type. Submit. Uh oh, answer is correct. You know what it is? It might be that this is uh, has some spaces in it. That's what it was. So we just take the spaces out around that operator. Now Wireshark doesn't care if you have a space on either side of the two uh, equals. So in this case, we just pull those spaces out and now we have our DNS query type. Okay, next. Let's go ahead and go to task number six, special operators. So some common operators, we, we've learned those already, but now there's some special ones. So we've learned a little bit about the membership operator. Also, we've seen contains, and now we're going to tinker a bit more with the matches operator. Okay, so uh, if we're going to come down here, so uh, PCAP for task three. So I'm just going to come back to Wireshark, and I opened up Try Hack Me Web again. So that gives me the task three PCAP. So how many packets contain the word assets, regardless of case? Well, contains cares about case. Matches does not. I'm using regex there. So for me, what I would do is I would just say frame matches assets. All right, so that gives me 10 packets. So let's come over here, check that one out. Now, what packet number contains the string AWS? Now in that case, let's go ahead and assume that that is case sensitive. So I can do contains, and I'm just going to say AWS. All right, so 804, that's the frame number. All right, good to go. Okay, next, how many packets contain the strings .org or .com? Now in this case, we didn't get a protocol uh, identifier or a protocol uh, wasn't indicated in the question, right? This could be... Uh, TCP, this could be UDP, this could be HTTP, this could be DNS, this could be anything with that string. Okay, so since that's the case, what I'm going to do is just come over here to frame. That means basically start at the Ethernet frame. Okay, so don't go into directly into IP or TCP. If we indicate TCP contains something, then that means we're just looking within the TCP payload. That means that we would miss things like DNS because DNS is over UDP. So for me, I like to just say frame. We're going to say matches because we want to use um, the regex operators. Now, if you're not good at regex, it's okay. You're in good company. I'm not good at them either. But there's some common ones that you will be using. All right. So let's go ahead and do a, a quotation. And we're going to do a slash dot. And what that does is it maintains the dot. The slash dot is how you say, okay, there's a dot in this parameter. What we're going to do is we're going to do an open parenthesis. And we're going to say, what was it that we're looking for, .org or com? OK, we're going to say org or com. Now, regex isn't the same um, language. This is pro-compatible. So we only need one or, one pipe to indicate or. We're going to close the paren and then close the quotation. So this is going to tell Wireshark, anytime you see .org or .com, anywhere in that frame, regardless of protocol, go ahead and show packet. I've got 28 that made that filter. I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to say 28. So that's a practical one, especially if you're not sure what type of server it is. If it's .NET, .org, .com, uh, that could be a common one that you actually end up using. All right, so now let's filter all traffic from ports 404 to 406. How many packets match that filter? So as soon as I see a range, right away I think membership operator. So I'm just going to actually copy these over. Why? Because I'm lazy. All right, I'm going to remove this one, and I'm just going to say tcp.port in, okay, open curly brace. And instead of the through, let's pull this out. That doesn't make any sense to Wireshark, dot, dot. And then I'm going to close my parenthesis, or I'm sorry, close curly brace. Easy to do. And then now any conversation that has a port from 404, 405, or 406. Uh, is going to be displayed for me, and that's 32 packets. So cool, so let me come back here, 32. I'm gonna say submit, and that was good. Now, how many packets contain the string get? Now, if I was gonna be real specific, I could say HTTP contains get, all right? Now, that's one way. What if uh, I wanted to see that word in something not HTTP? Uh, I could say TCP contains get or frame contains get, all right? So in this case, there's only two packets that actually have that word, and I went ahead and did the um, 
the case sensitive contains. So let's come back here and see if that worked. Sure enough did. All right. So that's some special operators that we were able to learn as well. So our membership operator that's in contains and also matches, which allows us to use Perl compatible expressions, regular expressions. All right. So let's go ahead and come down here. So putting it all together, filtering for scans. Okay. So I'm going to download this one. Okay, popped it open in Wireshark, and here we can see try hack me nmap scan v2. Cool. Okay, let's come down to our questions. How many packets have that sin flag? Well, you know what to do. TCP dot flags dot sin equals equals one. Okay, I've got one hundred. I'm sorry, one thousand twenty three. Okay, what's the address of the machine that's conducting the SIN scan or the stealth scan? Well, I can see that SINs are coming from this 102 number. So let me go ahead and expand IP. I'm just going to come down here to source address, copy value. Come back over here, pop that in. Next, uh, what station is being scanned? What's the IP? So 102 is scanning 101. Okay, so I'm just going to come over here, paste. Move that to 101 and hit enter. How many ports were open on the server for this port scan? Okay, so how many times do we see 101 returning that SYNAC? So I'm going to leave it SYN1 and tcp.flags.ac equals equals 1 and IP address SRC 192.168.56.1. I also could have uh, just taken this and just dragged this up up here and started to do uh, some tinkering with this filter, but I went ahead and did it the long way. Okay, so I can see that that's a number of packets, 23, but I just want to double check that that's the, also the number of unique conversations that I have. So here I can say I've got a thousand TCP conversations. Most of these are just sin attempts. So if I come down here to limit to display filter, this will show me just the statistics, but it'll respect the filter that I have applied. I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to say port A because this is the SYNAC coming back from this server. I'm going to sort that. Here I can see and just eyeball that, and I can see that these are all unique. Okay, so it tells me that this server has 23 unique ports open. Now I'm going to tell you is just a little sidebar. Usually if I'm doing this kind of crunching, uh, I'm going to do it with T Shark on the command line. And that's where I'm going to say, pull out all of these Synax, and then I'm going to do a sort unique with it. Because I want to make sure I'm just getting the unique ones. So if I had two Synax on port 21, for example, and two on port 23, and two on port 25, that's only three unique port numbers that are open. Right, but I just had two instances of each one. So I would see six packets instead of uh, just three port numbers. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, uh, I'll show you guys that on another video, but for now we can go ahead and do this with conversations. Okay, so I can see that I've got 23. So I'm gonna come back here, let's go ahead and say 23. All right, next, what's the lowest port number and then the highest port number? Come over here, I can see port 21 and then 8180. Okay, so 21 and then 8180. Okay, and then next, filter for traffic on TCP port 21. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to come over here. Just remove this. TCP.port equals equals 21. And just going to put my uh, packets back in order. So the question is, is this a, a half open or a full connect? Well, a half open is just sin synac reset. So only one side was actually open because it got an acknowledgement. A full connect scan is sin synac ac then a reset. So here I can see that this is a half open. So I can just take and I can grab that, copy, paste, and then hit submit. Now what is the TCP conversation completeness value of this conversation? Okay, in a stealth scan. So let me come down here, TCP, incomplete 35. So here I saw a sin, which is a value of one, a synac, which is a value of two, and then a reset, which is 33. If I add all that together, that's why I see the value of 35. And that's explained up in the description in that task. So here I can see it is 35. Now, when NMAP does a stealth scan, the SYN often has a low TCP window value. What's the value? 1024. And where did I get that from? If I come over here to that SYN, anytime that NMAP itself is actually starting or initiating by default, 
uh, that sin scan, it's going to use a window size of 1024, which is actually one way that we can discover that when we're doing some threat hunting. Okay, so 1024. Now to filter for a TCP window value, what's the name of the field we should use? Okay, so if I want to filter for that, if I just take this and I say uh, prepare as filter selected, I can see that the actual field name is tcp.windowsizeValue equals equals. All right, so that's going to be the answer. That is the field name. Last, how many of the ports that were scanned on the server are closed? Well, whenever we scan for a port uh, and that port is not open, it's going to kick back a reset. So first, let's do this. Let's find a port that was not open on that server. Let's just take uh, 1433, for example. Right click, uh, conversation filter TCP. I just want to see, okay, here's a send and here's a reset. All right, so what I want to see is I want to see the conversation completeness. I can actually use that value here because it's just a send and a reset, okay? So if I come down here, I can see that this is a, a 37, All right? So I'm just going to prepare as filter selected, okay? So I want the TCP completeness of 37, and I don't want any sins. So then I can say, or I just want the resets. So I can say and tcp.flags.reset equals equals 1. Okay, so all of the resets that have the TCP completeness of 37. That's uh, going to show me uh, 977 packets. Okay, so these are all of the resets that came back. And I actually went ahead and did a unique sort on this. So we know that all of these are actually unique uh, port numbers, that these weren't repeated uh, using Wireshark. So I can go 977. All right, submit. And that does make sense because there's 23 ports that were open. We scan, by default, we scan 1,000 ports. 23 were open, so 977 were closed. Okay, last one, filtering for usernames and passwords. Let's go ahead and download this. Okay, so this is a, a file called FTP Brute. So FTP is fun to uh, demonstrate this with because the usernames and passwords are in clear text. So we can see them pretty easily with Wireshark. So how many unique TCP conversations are in this PCAP? That was the first question. Let's go to conversations. We can see that we have 17 unique TCP conversations. All right. Now something else that my eye will catch, by the way, as an analyst, uh, most of those conversations are exactly the same length. They were almost all initiated at once, and they all lasted about 11.3 seconds in that duration. Just something that I'll file away if I'm ever doing some analysis on this PCAP. What port on the server is the attacker connecting to? Well, this is FTP. So if I come here, this is on port 21. So I'm going to pop that in, port 21. What version is VS uh, FTP daemon are we running? So I'm going to come down here. Uh, if I take a look at the response coming back from the server, once we establish our handshake, since in ACK, -ac, it's going to kick back its uh, response code and version. So if I actually take a look, if I want to do this the long way, come down to my FTP response argument. So this is our service version. So 2.3.4, that's our version, 2.3.4, hit enter or submit. What's the first username that the attacker attempts to connect to? All right, so let's go ahead and just take a little walk. Now, uh, the filter that I could use if I wanted to would be looking for the word user, or I could say FTP request command if it's a user, and then the argument is admin here. So this is something that uh, I could have, or I could have said um, FTP contains user. How's that? And that would give me, it would allow me to jump quickly to that first username that is sent to the server. And the answer is admin. Okay. Next, the first login attempt is in packet 21. Set a filter for this TCP connection. What password is attempted? Okay. So we're on uh, packet 81. Right click, conversation filter, TCP. And right after this, here's my username is admin. The server acts it and says thanks. Please specify the password. Cool, I will. The password is user. Login incorrect. Okay. So user is the password that's attempted. User. Now staying on this TCP connection, what's the next username? Let's come over here. The next one that it tries is user FTP user. And that also, the password is Tor. 
and that login is incorrect. All right, so let's go ahead and put this in, FTP user. All right, what's the response code for login incorrect? When we come over here, we can see that the response code here is 530. Okay, so not logged in is 530. So there we go, 530. Submit. Now, what is the response code for login successful? So let me just show you a little trick that I would actually do. So I would come down here to my response code. I just found a packet that says login incorrect. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to apply it as column. And I'm going to sort that column. So now I can see all the different response codes. Now here I can see username OK, need password, service was ready for new user. This is just that initial when we log in and the service is ready and now we, uh, before we put in our username and password, it's uh, 220, so 220. Now on this connection, we just didn't have a successful login, but there is a successful login in this PCAP. So I'm going to remove my filter and right now I can see my service is ready for a new user. Now let's go ahead and look for the one that's different. Not logged in, service ready, user logged in, proceed, login successful. Ooh. So if I select this, the response code of 230 is a login successful. All right, so I'm going to put my packets back in order, come down to that login successful. I'm on packet 541, right click, follow TCP stream. Here I can see that the username is MSF admin, password is MSF admin, and the login was successful. Awesome. Okay, so let's come back here and answer our questions. So the response code is 230. The username and password, MSF, Metasploit Framework, admin. And I'm going to use, separate that with a colon, MSF, admin, and say OK. Now, what's the display filter for all TCP successful login packets? Use a space before and after the operator this time. OK. So I'm just going to close and I'm going to come down here to this response or login successful and response code. So FTP response code, I'm going to take this and drag it upstairs, selected. So if I want to filter for all successful responses in an FTP conversation or FTP PCAP, I would use this filter. That might be one that I want to save over here with my little plus button. I can save an FTP successful or something like that. I copy this and I can come over here and I can just pay, paste this in and it's got the uh, spaces on each side of the operator hit submit now how many times has the attacker tried to authenticate with the username Chris hmm okay let's find out let's go ahead and I'm going to just go back and say conversation filter TCP and now what I want to do is when it says request user request argument I'm gonna right click this going to prepare as filter selected and I'm going to just type in instead of MSF admin let's just say the request argument is CHRIS all right here I can see that the request I've got uh, seven packets seven times that the initiator tries to use the username of Chris to log in okay so I can see that is a seven hit submit and that, my friends, brings us to the conclusion of this room. So I can just hit completed. And now we have successfully completed the Wireshark filters room. So congr congratulations, everybody, for getting through this one. I hope that you enjoyed it, getting some more practice with Wireshark filters. I hope this was practical for you. If you like it, share this room with others. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up within Try Hack Me. That really helps me so that they see that good content's coming their way. And uh, go ahead and comment to the bottom of this video. Let me know how you thought about it. All right, take care, everybody. Bye for now.